Subframe connectors are an absolutely necessary mod for any third generation F body. The factory chassis is extremely weak in the center section. Subframe connectors correct this weakness by connecting the front and rear subframe. The result is a chassis that is much stiffer than stock. Subframe connectors are absolutely necessary whether your car is a track day car or a daily driver. I'll be using the UMI outer subframe connectors and the Alston's inner subframe connectors. Both of these connectors combined weigh a whopping 52 pounds. It's not a big deal because the weight is in the middle of the car, but it's still not weight that I necessarily wanted to add to my car. You're gonna need a lot of tools for this install. It's impossible to list them all. I rented a lift to make this install way easier. And I don't recommend trying to do this on jack stands. That'd make this install way too hard. Remove the heat shield. Remove the two bolts that connect the rear exhaust to the catalytic converter. And then remove the two bolts that hold the exhaust hanger in place. Remove the 10 millimeter bolts that hold the brake and fuel line assembly to the chassis. These lines need to be removed for clearance for welding. Use a flapper wheel to remove powder coat in areas that we're going to weld. So we used about 110 amps all out on our TIG machine here to put in some tacks on the subframes. A MIG welder in hindsight probably would have been a little easier. There was a fairly large gap that we couldn't weld over, so we cut a little bit off and clo closed the gap with a hammer. These cars are over 25 years old at this point and every car is going to be a little bit different. Well, my welds weren't very pretty, but they'll work. And we then welded the front of the subframe connector. And then we welded the front and rear part of the inner subframe connector, the same as the other side. Remove the lower control arm and then install the UMI outer subframe connector. Make sure not to over tighten the bolt after the lower control arm is removed. The driver's side outer subframe connector has two mounting points in the front of the car. All the fit up was extremely easy for the front. And we put a small bead on the rear subframe connector. This probably wasn't necessary, but we just did it for good measure. The passenger subframe connector installs just like the other one, but it only has one mounting pad for a weld. Reinstall the lower control arms and torque them to 76 pound feet. Reinstall the rubber exhaust hanger. and then reconnect the exhaust to the catalytic converter. Cover the exposed welds with an epoxy paint. This is the driver's side inner subframe connector. 
and the passenger inner subframe connector goes over the catalytic converter. And this is the outer subframe connector and it has one mounting point right above the cat. The driver's side outer subframe connector has two mounting points in the front of the car. I hope this makes it really clear to where the subframe connectors are supposed to be mounted on these cars. I ran out of time to weld up this little piece, but this is the way it mounts. Lower your car off the lift. I took my car to the autocross the very next day and I was very pleased with the results. One of the instructors was actually very impressed on how stiff the chassis was for such an old car. Handling aside, the ride quality was much, much better after this install and it quiets down a lot of the squeaks and rattles. I'd like to thank the self-service garage in Tacoma uh, for making this possible and a call out to my buddy who runs Mythic Welding. He did a really good job on these welds and I appreciate all the help. I hope you liked this video. If you did, please leave a like and a comment below.